Hey everyone, my name is Alec, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build the most fun 110 pit bike. This is going to be based around this Kawasaki Talox 110. This might not be the fastest bike or the coolest, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do all the basic mods that you would need, and uh, we'll get this thing all tricked out and make it an awesome little 110 for any adult. <music> So since I'm starting out with the brand new KLX 110, the very first thing I do with any new dirt bike is I take all these stock, nice, clean looking plastics off, and then I put on some UFO plastics. First of all, I just like the color all green better than the green and white, and I like to keep the stock plastics in good condition. We're gonna rip all these OEM plastics off right away and get the UFO plastics on. So as you can tell, we just finished up getting all the plastics on this thing. That's not really a mod, it's just something I like to do. Uh, it's not for everybody, but I just start there. So we got a blank slate here. The first thing we're gonna do is comfort wise, we're gonna replace the stock seat with a tall seat. So right here is what we're gonna be replacing this with. This is a Two Brothers brand tall seat with a Guts uh, ribbed cover on there. This is just one I've had laying around. This thing works awesome. I actually like these a little bit better than the BBR ones. I think the foam is just a little bit more comfortable. So this is what I choose on all my 110s. Super easy. We'll just pop this thing off. Pop the tall seat on. So the next thing, we're gonna throw these handlebars on. Um, if you have a standard KLX 110 like this one, you're just gonna need an extended throttle cable and an extended front brake cable. If you have the 110L, then obviously you're gonna need the extended clutch cable. I choose to go with these uh, Mica Metal bars. These are the Pit Bike High Bend. So they have two Pit Bike Bends. They have Pit Bike High and Pit Bike Low. I think the High is just gonna work a little bit better on this setup with the tall seat. I've ran both, they're both really good. Uh, I really like these bars and they're pretty affordable. Pro tapers, rentals, whatever. It doesn't matter what you got. You just want something that's a little bit taller with a little less back sweep. You can see here, these bars tend to stay straighter where these pull back. And then obviously with stock 110 bars are, are not quite as wide. So this gives you a lot better feel of the bike. You're, you're gonna wanna do bars right away. It'll make this thing ride so much better. <music> Quick note here, when you're removing this electronic controller on these newer 110s, uh, the factory bars have a little hole in them that lines it up. But when you're going to an aftermarket bar, you have to shave. There's a little tab in here and you could just take a file and just shave that down. So then it'll work with any aftermarket bar. It fits nicely on there, which is how it needs to fit. So as you can tell, I just got done getting these handlebars installed. These things went on uh, without any major issues. Luckily, the electrical cord is long enough, so it's not any problem. You don't have to extend it or pull it. Uh, the new cables went on pretty good. I went with ODI lock-on grips. I really like these lock-on grips, obviously, because they don't twist. And then the factory uh, grip is kind of like glued to the throttle tube. So this just replaces the whole throttle tube. These are really nice grips. Um, good bar setup, pretty basic, but this is really all you need. All right, so we got our seat done, we got our handlebars done. Those are two really big things. Now the third thing we're gonna have to address is the foot pegs. 
Um, these are swept up from the factory and they're good for kids, but we need something that's more neutral so we can fit bigger feet on there. So either you want to do a peg bar or in this case, we're going to run a JTI cradle and I'll show you how that goes on. The advantage to the cradle is it acts as a skid plate, the, the cradle itself and the foot peg bracket. The most common problem with these KLXs is that if you jump a little too big on these things, you run the risk of blowing the foot pegs right out of the bottom of the engine cases. And you definitely don't want to be doing that. So a cradle is a must if you're going big on these things. But like I said, we're going to put this JTI system on and it's going to do everything. It's going to this is the JTI uh, Corso plate, they call it. This is the cradle system. Uh, foot peg bracket, the cradle here, and then the skid plate. This is a really nice design piece. These things are actually kind of hard to get, so luckily I was able to get this thing. And JTI sends you with all the instructions, including torque specs, as well as the bolt kit, and then uh, peg pins and springs. They do not include pegs, so you have to supply your own. Get this thing installed. Now, I like to use just a little bit of blue Loctite on all these things, just for extra security. It definitely is not gonna hurt. You don't want any bolts rattling loose on this. So the JTI Corso plate is all installed. Now we're just gonna throw some foot pegs in. I'm just going to be using some used YZ foot pegs. This peg mount takes any type of YZ peg, any modern YZ peg, I should say. I want to say 2004 and up. Somewhere around there, they're all about the same. So we'll just go right in here. And with the new springs we got from JTI and pins, it should just uh, pop right in and give us a nice foot peg. I would definitely recommend good foot pegs. You don't want to get cheap ones. I've had cheap ones break in the past. I personally just like OEM uh, pegs off big bikes. Obviously they're designed for a lot of abuse, so these work really good on pit bikes too. So now down to the left side of the bike where the shifter sits. Uh, obviously I removed the stock steel shifter. It does not have a foldable tip, so they're pretty prone to bending. You can bend them back, you can run them, but we're gonna upgrade to something with a foldable tip. This is one that I've had over the years. I just hit it with some paint, so it looks new. This is the IMS brand, or IMS, however you wanna call it. These are really good shifters. These are really underrated. Uh, there's a lot of options for shifters and 99% of them are just aluminum and they're cheap and they bend and they break. This one is steel. It's obviously heavier. We're all about practicality here. So this one, if we bend it, we can just heat it up and bend it back. It's got a really durable foldable tip. You can see that's pretty thick steel uh, compared to the aluminum ones. So we're gonna throw this thing on and it's gonna be a, a really good shifter. So we got our left side of the bike dialed in with the larger shifter. Now over to the right side, I'm gonna be putting an extended brake pedal on. And as you can tell, this one is an over the top. The over the top design is just a lot nicer. It's easier to set the bike down on a stand first of all, and it's less likely to get caught on any rocks or anything when you're leaning into a turn. So that's gonna go on right like that. So we'll get this uh, bolt off here, the clevis pin off the spring, and we'll just uh, throw this new lever right on. So the very last thing I'm gonna do here is just kind of another personal preference mod, but I think it's kind of necessary at the same time. These factory levers, uh, they break off pretty easily and it's a pit bike, they get road hard. So it's super common for these levers to break off and it kind of sucks not having a lever for the rest of the day if you break that. So I'm just gonna be swapping it over to one of these unbreakable levers and this is just the Piranha brand one. It's nothing fancy, it's cheaper in terms of unbreakable levers. The quality looks pretty good. So we're going to be swapping from the stock lever over to this unbreakable brake lever. All right, well, there you have it. That's pretty much all you need to make your stock 110 a ton of fun. You don't need to touch the engine. You don't need to do the exhaust or carburetor mods or anything like that. 
you really just need handlebars, foot pegs, some controls, some more adult friendly features. And these things are a blast. This is what I found is like the most fun setup. Uh, you can run all the stock classes and if you're fast, you can run this bike in a mod class and still have a ton of fun. This is where I would start. If you're building a 110, it's a really good baseline. Then after that, if you want to tweak anything or do any blame parts, uh, I would do that after you get these mods done first. In the next episode, I will be touching up the suspension a little bit so it rides a little bit better so we can go a little bit bigger. Uh, and then I'll probably do a couple little bling parts. Check that out and uh, then we'll shred this thing and see how it works. But thank you for watching.